Any of you might have already seen that video titled The Hardest Problem on the Hardest Test. For those who haven't, let me introduce a simpler version of it. If we randomly select three points on a circle, what are the chances? The circle center lies inside the triangle formed by these points. The answer is 1 over 4, and I will explain why. The key takeaway from that video is that a clever approach to probability can simplify problem solving significantly. This video follows the same theme. We will explore a puzzle where changing perspectives makes the solution much simpler. But first, let's establish some groundwork by solving an easier question using a similar technique. Imagine you flip four coins. What is the probability that the number of heads is even? For example, getting two heads is a favorable outcome, getting three is not. A straightforward solution is to count all possible outcomes and how many of those are favorable. There are 16 possible outcomes, and exactly 8 have an even number of heads, giving us a probability of 50%. However, there is a smarter way to solve this, using the so-called principle of deferred decision. Imagine you have access to a magical oracle that can see the future and reveal the result of these four coins. You have to pay for the oracle's full services, but you opt for the free trial, which shows you the result of the second, third, and fourth coins, not the first one. With this information, you can still determine the probability. If the three known coins have an odd number of heads, you need the first coin to be another head for the total to be even, which has a 50% chance. If the three known coins already have an even number of heads, you need the first coin to be a tail, also a 50% chance. Therefore, regardless of the oracle's information, the probability remains 50%. We have just reviewed two solutions to this simple problem. Let's compare them visually. The first solution shows that half of the cells are shaded, resulting in a 50% probability. In the second solution, if we fix the result of the last three coins, we end up with only two options. These two options are always two rows apart, with one having an even number of heads and the other having an odd number. By partitioning the outcomes into these pairs, we see that in each partition, the probability of success is 50%. So, the overall answer remains 50%. With that background, let's dive into solving the hardest problem on the hardest test. To simplify, let's use symmetry. Assume the first point is at this fixed location. That is fine since you can rotate the shape to bring any point to this position. This makes the problem two-dimensional and easier to visualize. Consider this angle as x, which moves the yellow dot horizontally in the phase space, and this angle as y, which moves the yellow dot vertically. Each pair of angles x and y corresponds to one yellow dot in the square. We can look for all favorable outcomes by scanning the whole phase space. That forms a shape covering 25% of the square. Therefore, the probability of success is 1 over 4. It is not an elegant solution, but my goal is to show you what a straightforward solution looks like. For the smarter solution, we need our oracle again. He knows where the red and blue dots will be, but doesn't tell us for free. Instead, she reveals their directions. So, the red dot will be either here or here, each with a 50% chance. The same goes for the blue dot, either here or here. This gives us a total of four possible pairings, like this, 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 or this. And guess what? Only one of them is favorable. The one on the opposite side of the white dot. And that gives us the same 25% chance. Let's compare the two solutions again. This is what we had. Each pair of red and blue dots is like one yellow dot in the phase space. Now, we get four pairs of dots. 
forming a square of the length side of pi. And as you can see, the shaded area is shaped such that only one corner of this square lies inside the green zone, confirming the 25% probability of success. Now for our main puzzle. Imagine we have 10 bags. The first bag has 9 red balls and 0 green ball. The second has 8 red balls and 1 green ball. And this pattern continues until the 10th bag, which has 0 red balls and 9 green balls. We randomly pick a bag, draw a ball, and it's green. We discard it and draw another ball from the same bag. What are the chances? This ball is also green. To understand this, let's run a simulation 100 times. We start with a 9 times 10 grid where each column represents a bag and each cell is a ball. In each iteration, we pick a column at random, then pick a cell. If it's red, we mark the iteration as invalid, since our first draw must be green. If the first ball is green, we pick another ball. If it's green again, it's a success. If it's red, it's a failure. For the sake of symmetry, even in the invalid iterations, we pick the second ball. This way we always draw two balls and then we tied about the pocket. As we watch the simulation, let me spoil the answer. It's 2 over 3, which means two thirds of valid cases are successful. Interestingly, this probability remains the same, regardless of the number of bags, whether we start with 3 bags or 100. The chance stays 2 over 3. It's not surprising that half of the cases are invalid, as the first ball has a 50% chance of being red due to symmetry. You might have expected the probability of success to be more than 50% given that a green first ball likely comes from a bag with more green balls. But why is it exactly 2 over 3, and why is it independent of the number of bags? Let's start with a straightforward solution, involving some intimidating calculations. Feel free to skip the next minute, if mathematics is not your thing. Or, if you like, pause the video and try it yourself. We need a bit of notations. Let n be the number of bags, which is 10 in our example, and k be the number of balls in the first step, which is 1 here. Define these events. a as the event that the last ball is green, b the event that all the first k balls are green, and ci is the event that the back number i is chosen. We need to calculate the probability of A given B, which can be written as probability of A and B over the probability of B, and then using the law of total probability, we can expand this to make it conditional on CI. Knowing about the back, it's not hard to see that this can be calculated like this. There are a lot of common terms to be cancelled, and some fixed term to be dragged out, and then using hockeyistic identity on Pascal triangles, we can find a closed form for this. And more cancellation, and we get to k plus 1 over k plus 2, which is 2 over 3 for k equals to 1. Let's jump to our elegant proof. If you have a bit of OCD, you might find this shape annoying because it lacks a bit of symmetry. To fix this, we can elevate the green section and fit a gray diagonal section in the middle. This creates a square and also establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between the column chosen and the location of the gray cell. Essentially, this two-dimensional model can be simplified into a one-dimensional one. Here is how it works. We pick a cell which represents the chosen back, so we mark it gray. Everything above it is treated as green and everything below as red. This setup is the same as before, but much simpler. We pick just three numbers from 1 to 10, and based on their order, we determine their color. Let's call our oracle again. He knows the first, second, and the third ball, 
It only tells us the sets, not the order of them. Among the 120 possible triples, she reveals this one to be the set. There are six ways to order these numbers, each equally likely in our simulation. The first number is gray by definition. The second number is red if it is higher than the first one and green if it is lower. The same rule applies to the third number, red if it is more, green if it is less than the gray one. Knowing the colors, we can determine the bucket for each order. Out of these six, half are invalid, and among the valid ones, two of them are successful, one is not. This means that the probability of success is 2 over 3, as we expected. Yes, I know you might be confused. So, let's recap with the story. Imagine we have one bag with 10 colorless balls numbered 1 to 10. You have three friends. The first friend picks a ball, paints it gray, and put it in a jar. He also paints all balls with the lower number green and all balls with the higher number red. By the way, I forgot to mention, we are colorblind, so let's hide the colors. Your second friend picks a ball and drop it in the same jar, and then your third friend does the same. Your second friend tells you that his ball was green, and now you want to know the chances that the third ball was also green. You look at the jar and see these numbers, and I bet you already know the rest. The chance is 2 over 3. And that concludes this video. As an exercise, you can think of the solution for other values of k. Or, if you enjoyed the previous problem more, think of this generalization of it. You pick k random points on a circle. What is the chance for the circle center to be inside their convex hull? You already know the answer for k equal to 3, and you know it should be an increasing function. Try to find out what it is. At the end, if you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe. It was my first time making a video like this, and your support motivates me to make more. For now, I wish you a beautiful time with some beautiful puzzles.